what are two most important nakshatras that we miss in the horoscope and when i say miss i don't mean to say we don't see or we don't analyze at all but we don't pay much importance to it okay to both of them actually now why we don't pay importance well i won't get into those details <laughs> But the conclusion is we need to pay importance to these two nakshatras, which can give us a lot of clues about difficulties in life. Well, the fact of the matter is you may like it or you may not. 70, maybe 90% of our time in life goes in solving problems. Now you may say, oh, but I'm going to work, right? How is that solving problem? Yes, you are solving the problem of hunger. <laughs> okay, so you are sleeping because you are rejuvenating so that you can work, so that you can uh, get rid of hunger, right? You can eat something. You can have a roof over your head. So <clears throat> difficulties, troubles and problems are inevitable, right? So therefore, if we get some clues in regards to how should we tackle difficulties in life? Then we can actually tackle difficulties. And which are two planets which help us to tackle difficulties? Or which are those two planets which show difficulties? Okay, One among the two is pretty obvious, as you might have guessed, right? Well, yes, it is Saturn, none other than Saturn. But the question is... What is so special about uh, the nakshatra of Saturn? Okay, it's very interesting because we should actually understand uh, what is there in the nakshatra of Saturn. Otherwise, we will not be able to understand how Saturn is functioning in the chart. So, as I always say that you have to see which house Saturn is lording and also which how Saturn is placed, where is he aspecting planets, which are aspecting Saturn, okay? Not only which are being aspected by Saturn, but also those which are aspecting Saturn. So, uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, we ignore the nakshatra, okay? Now, what's the difference, you know? So, for example, say Saturn is um, the 10th lord in somebody's chart, which means either you are Aries or Taurus Lakna, for example. That means... Saturn's primary agenda is profession. So does it mean his primary agenda is to give you problems in profession? Well, that may not be wrong. <laughs> it may not be right always, but it may not be wrong also, which means it is significantly true. So, but the question is when... When is the problem coming? The answer is in the Dasha. So in the Mahadasha, Antar Dasha of Saturn or even in the Pratyantar. Okay? So this means if an Aries or Taurus Lagna person has Saturn, Antar Dasha or Mahadasha coming up, then you know that there are struggles which will come in the profession. But because it is 10th house, you will overcome those struggles and you will, you will do big things in life. Provided uh, Saturn is not like very badly smashed by, you know, Rahu or Mars or somebody like that. But assuming that the Saturn is average, you know, uh, uh, and it also depends on where Saturn is placed. Okay, so, so for example, now if Saturn is uh, going in your third house, okay, so as the Lord of the 10th going in your third house, this means that you will be into some kind of advertising or software or um, IT AI, uh, new trending technologies, you will be into writing, marketing, sales and all this. You might also be into photography and all this, which are with things which have very quick assignments. Okay. So this is about the lordship and the placement, but where does the nakshatra come in place? Now, the nakshatra of Saturn will tell you what kind of traits you may be interested to work on with respect to the lordship. So for example, if your Saturn is 10th Lord and he's in the third house, and uh, let's take in, take take any example. Let's take some fancy examples, okay? No, uh, not only for Saturn. If there's any planet as the 10th Lord and is sitting in uh, the nakshatra of Rohini, okay? 
So for example, if you were a Pisces Lagna, so for Pisces Lagna, 12, 1, 2. So Taurus is the third house and you know Rohini is completely in Taurus. So Sagittarius is in your 10th house. So 10th Lord is Jupiter. So Jupiter as the 10th Lord is sitting in your third house in Rohini. So now what happens? Again, as I said, there are all these possibilities that uh, you might be doing. But now because it is Rohini, it may give you some special interest towards photography. Why? Because Rohini represents uh, good photos, attractive photos. Anything charming, attractive that you see in this world is somehow related to Rohini Nakshatra. And it is pretty obvious and but natural because Rohini is Lord Krishna's birth Nakshatra. His moon was in Rohini and Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Yad yad vibhuti matsatvam shrimad urjita me vavan that, oh, Arjuna, whatever, uh, whatever attractive that you see in this world is a spark of my splendor. This is what Lord Krishna says. Anything beautiful in this world is coming from Lord Krishna, okay, because he's the source of all beauty. Indeed. So now, if the 10th Lord, Jupiter, is in the third, this can mean you have a tendency to work with some good looking objects okay like photography uh, your wildlife and all this okay wildlife because of the third house it can also be you are traveling to some places you know and along with that if venus is well placed because venus is the dispositor of taurus then you will be very good in photography so 10th lord in rohini can give you interest towards photography but the lord of the uh, Taurus, which is Venus, will actually tell you, are you good at it or not? If not Tor if not Venus, then at least Moon has to be well placed. Why? Because Moon is the Nakshatra Lord of Rohini. So either the Nakshatra Lord of Rohini or the dispositor of the sign. So in this case, either Moon or Venus has to be reasonably well placed for you to be good in photography if your 10th Lord is in the 3rd in Rohini. So now when it comes to Saturn, Saturn in the third house, if it is in Rohini, then it's very interesting because Saturn can reveal some problems. Now, what are some of the problems which are associated with Rohini? Number one problem is false accusations. Yes, false accusations. Like in Rohini Nakshatra, we have the example of Lord Krishna being uh, accused of stealing the Shamantak money, right? So it's a long story. I'll not get into it. But then later on, Lord Krishna came out and he gave the Shamantak money, right? So he proved that he did not steal. So you might have to fight a battle which you didn't choose. <laughs> so it's like a battle is imposed on you. Which means you are sitting peacefully and you are not doing anything. But somehow the battle is imposed on you. So now, if you are a Pisces Lagna, then which houses does Saturn rule in the chart? Saturn is lording, you know, the 11th house and he's lording the 10th house or the 12th house, okay, 11th and 12th. So now, the 11th house can show uh, significant financial gains. So now it can mean that when you are about to go to get some money or do some work or some business, then it can mean that you are, you have been accused of something which you never did. And then you do not have an option to not fight. Okay, this is very important with Rohini. I see people are always, uh, they always say only the good sides of a nakshatra, but every nakshatra has difficulties. Okay, so one of the most difficulties, uh, biggest difficulties with Rohini is you do not have a choice to not fight it because there is a terrible humiliation otherwise. Okay, so you need to understand what is going on. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will have a tough time. If you don't understand and if you are like just hovering around. So Rohini means you might have to do things which you don't like. Okay, Not immoral thing, but you, you are forced to uh, fight with somebody you are not interested in. And you didn't do anything in the first place, but you have no option. Okay, So you got to do it. So therefore, if I see for any Pisces Lagna, anybody... Saturn as the Lord of 11th and 12th is in the third house in Taurus, in Rohini. 
I always tell them that my dear sir, my dear madam, you need to make sure that you take care of all security and compliances. Please take everything in writing. Please, for the sake of the heavens. <laughs> please take it in writing. If you are into corporate and somebody says something to you, do not take it in face, face value. Please tell that person, my dear sir, my dear madam, could you please, could we please record this or could you please give this to me in writing? Now, this may not be the best professional thing. You know, somebody may not like your senior or your boss may not like if you say like this. But you have to do it to safeguard yourself. Otherwise, you do something and then uh, later on they say, oh, I never told, told you to do this. I never, I don't remember telling you to do like this. Why did I say? It was not me. Maybe you were... Uh, you are absent-minded, right? You are not hearing properly. I said something else, okay? <laughs> so, therefore, it's very important that you document every single thing, at least the major things, okay? If not every single detail. And especially when it comes to breaking some rule or some law, okay? Of course, breaking law is very dangerous, but... Even uh, there are a lot of rules in a company in a subtle form which you are expected to follow, which you might be encouraged to break by somebody, by some senior. Okay, So you have to make sure that you do not have any responsibility if things go wrong. And if they give you responsibility of things getting wrong, um, then better not do it. Okay. So this is very important because uh, this is one trait about Rohini. Okay, uh, but there are a hundred other traits, you know, you have to read more about Rohini and Akshatra and you have to understand. This is one example. Okay, so 10th Lord, 6th Lord, 11th Lord in Rohini as Saturn. You know, so very careful. Now, because this is third house, so this nature will be like the third house. So the allegation will be in social media. Okay. Uh, the allegation will be by somebody who you might have met, you know, for a short period of time because this is the third house. So third house will bring out the traits of Rohini. So that is how you will understand what are some of the major conflicts, okay, which a person can have. And for this Pisces ascendant, if that person has Jupiter also in Rohini along with Saturn, this is like a double whammy because Jupiter is the Lagda Lord and the 10th Lord. Okay. And Saturn is the 11th Lord. So 10th Lord, 11th Lord in the third and in Rohini. Wow. You might click great photos. You might be very extravagant in communication and in luxury. But huh, accusations non-stop okay it's like never ending and you are wondering what the hell did i do in my past life <laughs> okay so you you have to understand that um, if you have rohini nakshatra related to saturn you you might you might have to take a battle someday which you remember okay <laughs> because you go to shrimad bhagavatam and read you know like it's a crazy that shamanta money pastime like supremely crazy it's like beyond all craziness okay but of course there's another good thing about rohini is you know something great came out okay so for example lord krishna and the great devotee of lord ram and lord krishna and lord ram they are not different so he's actually krishna's devotee also who is none other than the son of brahma the son of Brahmaji is Jambavan himself. So Jambavan and Lord Krishna fought. Now, imagine how painful it is. You are, God and his devotee are fighting. So it's like, can you imagine Hanumanji and Lord Ram, they are fighting. <laughs> Just imagine, you know, both of them are punching each other, pounding on each other. <laughs> it can be very, uh, very exciting to see, but yet very dangerous and disastrous and very painful, right? But in case of Lord Krishna, he had to do this. You know, Shamantak money and uh, then finally Jambavati and Lord Krishna got married. Jambavati is the daughter of Jambavan. So something good also comes out later on. Yeah, and then everybody respects you because you brought the Shamantak money. You know. 
So therefore, it is not that it is all bad, but uh, things will come out. But after some some controversy, some scandal, you have to fight some court case and then you are out of it. Okay. So this is very important, especially if say, it is Saturn. 100, I won't say 100, nothing is 100% guaranteed. But I have seen in many, many, many examples. I won't quantify in percentages, but in many examples I have seen. The Artha house, if Saturn is the lord of the Artha houses, like 2nd, 6th, 10th, and even for 11th, and he's in Rohini. And depending on which house Rohini is, depending on your ascendant, where is Taurus, you know, you will always have some scandal or controversy related to that house, okay? So be on the watch out. And which is the second nakshatra, which we mostly ignore. And this is very... Uh, this is very bad because this nakshatra can give us a lot of clues about our past life. Yes, you got it right. I am talking of Ketu's nakshatra because Ketu, I recently made a video on Ketu. Does Ketu represent things which we conquered in the past or the things that we just left in the past? Okay, so if you have not watched it, then just go and watch, please. Maybe seven days or ten days before I made that video. That will give you a very good perspective of Ketu. So, regarding Ketu, Ketu is a flag, okay? But that does not mean that it represents always things which you have always conquered. It can also mean that things, Ketu, it, Ketu can also represent things which out of frustration because you thought you conquered but you still didn't get it, you left it. And now you are on the opposite side where Rahu is. So the Ketu's nakshatra in your chart can give you excellent clues about one of the two things. About what do you escape in life? Your escapism or your strong point. Now that will depend on the chart as I explained in that video. So for example, uh, if, you, if you have Ketu in the seventh, so people say, oh, you will be disinterested in marriage. Now, why are you disinterested? Is it because you have experienced married life multiple times and you are like, okay, now I need to do something else. I will become a monk. Or is it because you have had so many terrible experiences with marriage? So you are like, oh, I, I'm done with marriage. I don't want to think of marriage. You know, I've been divorced like two times, three times, four times, five times, or maybe a thousand times in my previous lifetime. So now I am not wanting to marry at all so that for that you will have to see the chart because both the both the scenarios extreme fulfillment extreme uh, unhappiness can give disinterest now imagine you are eating something you know imagine an indian desert you know gulab jamun very delicious somebody comes and tells you okay here are 20 gulab jamuns you eat and you are eating and eating and eating, you know, every time you are eating a gulab jamun, the next gulab jamun becomes less and less pleasurable. So by the time you have eaten maybe 10, you know, how many can you eat? Write in the comments. <laughs> uh, 10, 15, 20, uh, I think I can go to 10 maybe. <laughs> but what happens after you eat 10, 15? You are like, ah. Oh, I don't care. Even if it's the world's best gulab jamun, I don't care. Okay. But on the other hand, imagine you are searching, searching, searching whole day. You know, imagine some, you, you are not in India. You are in some other part of the world. You are maybe in Germany or you are in US, London, anywhere or in Africa or, you know, in the Middle East. And you are searching, searching. Where is that Indian store? I'll find, I'll find, I'll find from so many days you are finding, you know. And then you are so frustrated, you are so unhappy that I'm just finding it. Ah, leave it. Now, because now the frustration by from not getting it has exceeded the pleasure you would have got if you would have got, found a gulab jamun. So, so therefore, Ketu's nakshatra can tell you one of the two extremes. Okay, so many times you will see people... Uh, they will always, you know, uh, find, uh, they will try to escape things in life, okay? But they don't, but if somebody asks you, what are the things that you might escape? Uh, well, you can't exactly point out just by Ketu's nakshatra, but you can still get a view, get a good idea of 
what are some of the areas which the person may uh, try to run away from, okay? So for example, if uh, Ketu is in Ketu is in Rohini, for example. So it may mean that you have experienced beauty so much, you know, in your previous lifetimes, love, romance, art, and all this. Now you are totally disinterested, okay? Or it may mean that you try to uh, find, you know, love, beauty, romance, and all this, but you are so frustrated that you are not, uh, now you are casual about your relationships, you know, casually in the sense, ah, I don't, it's just there, you know, it's not very prominent for me. So it's like the person is escaping from responsibilities. Okay, so that could be a scenario if uh, Ketu is related to Rohini and the second house or fifth house or seventh house. This is just an example I'm saying, okay? So, when you know what are the difficulties, which is from the nakshatra of Saturn, and what are the difficult, what are the person's escape routes from Ketu's nakshatra, then you can actually say, my dear sir, this is what your problem is, and this is what you are escaping from. So, please try to see how you can channelize the horoscope properly, which means, you know, your energies. So that you do not escape things beyond a certain extent. And you do not, you, are, you know what Saturn's nakshatra can bring. So you know the inevitable. And at the same time, you are aware that this inevitable difficulty can get worse if I'm still going on with my escape routes. And if in the chart, Saturn and Ketu are connected, so if Saturn, Ketu, Saturn is aspecting Ketu, they are together. Or if Ketu is in the sign of Saturn, okay. So if they are somehow connected, the more they are connected, <clears throat> the more you will, you might have this, you know, tendency to escape. So there is some unhappiness and then you escape. Escape unhappiness and that escape perpetuates that unhappiness and that unhappiness makes you escape more. So it's like a deadly cycle you are going on, okay. Saturn and Ketu. So you need to be very careful when you see these two planets. They can give you enormous clues about what the person does not want to do in life and what the person will eventually have to do in life. Either he likes it or it doesn't. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. And if you want a consultation, my website is down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll surely find him. Thank you.